Okay, thank you for joining me. I'm Brian Banks from Your Career Day. Can you give us your name? I am Lisa House. I'm from okay. Detroit, Michigan. All right, and, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to be here, Brian. All right, thank you. Now, what is your career title, Lisa? So I am an author, speaker, CPA, and professional strategist. Okay. So All right. We, lot, wearing a lot of hats. Wearing a lot of hats. I've done a lot of things in my 25 plus year career, but I'm excited to uh, share this platform and, and speak to the audience uh, of students that you're looking to help them decide what career paths they should take for themselves. Okay. Now, what does your job entail? So right now I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, mm -hmm. I just completed the writing of my book, Candy Girl Mentality, Keys okay. to Turning Bitter Moments into Sweet Success. Uh, in that book, I talk about how I started um, this venture, everything that I've accomplished in the last, I'll say, 10 years, you know, serving as a state representative, running for mayor in the city of Detroit, serving as the mayor's chief of staff and chief government affairs officer, um, leading a university as its vice president here in Detroit, expanding uh, our reach and developing strategic partnerships. All of those things are what I've done of recent times, but it all began in high school, like many of the students who will probably watch this, when I took a $13 investment in a box of candy, mm -hmm. uh, M&Ms no less, and turned it into over $4,000 by the time I graduated, which helped to fund my first semester at the University of Michigan. And so when I graduated from Michigan, my professional career started in accounting. So okay. that's how I became a certified public accountant, uh, working for, at that time, one of the big six accounting firms. Okay. Now, what type of education is required to be an accountant? Fantastic. Yes. So you want to be able to complete your bachelor's degree. Um, it is required by most states that you complete 150 credit hours. Uh, so that would, you know, entail possibly continuing with graduate work. Um, mm -hmm. Then you would uh, work for a public accounting firm, sit for the uniform CPA exam, um, which, you know, is something that I often tell people, take a deep breath because it's going to require, you know, it's going to require a lot. You know, when I mm -hmm. took it, there were four parts to the exam. I didn't pass on my first try. I didn't pass on my second try. In fact, I, I thought I wasn't going to take the exam again, but um, after the third and fourth try, I got three parts done and then finally the final part. And so I share that story to help uh, students understand that, hey, you're going to experience setbacks like that when the outcome that you get is not the outcome that you look for. But mm -hmm. don't give up. Keep right. going. Keep trying and you will get it done. And so in this day and era, the good news is that you don't have to sit for all four parts at the same time. You could take one part at a time and you have a total of 18 months to get the entire four parts passed. So that's the good news about that. Um, the beautiful thing about working in public accounting is no day is like the past, like the other. Um, there's always variety in terms of the clients that I had an opportunity to serve uh, in various industries. So if you like sports and entertainment, if you like financial services and banking, you want to be close to the money like I did, yeah. uh, those are some of the types of clients that I got a chance to work on. So I never got bored where it's like, oh, I'm going into the office to do the same thing over and over again, week in and week out. Accounting actually provides you a plethora of opportunities that um, allows your career to have unlimited choices. Oh, that's great. Uh, now, what is the type of person best suited to be an accountant? I would say, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, I don't like math, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> Accounting is really about solving problems. Yes, there's a bit of math because, you know, everything in life is about solving problems and you, you've got to understand how to, you know, add two and two and get a result. And so the result that you're trying to produce for your client is um, a result that's going to help them to meet their needs as as a business. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say the person who is looking for adventure, who is looking to learn 
who is looking to leverage what they've learned to possibly become their own business owner, like myself and like many of my colleagues have. Okay. All right. Um, now, you talked about this a little bit, but what was your road to getting there? And you, you talked about the taking the test, and but how did you, how did you ultimately get here? Whew. Okay. So I had to, number one, uh, set aside my ego. <laughs> it's funny to say that because um, at the time when I applied to, well, let me back up. Ego is involved. So we're going to come back to that. We're going to put mm -hmm. a little pin there. But honestly, how it all started was with one of my high school teachers. Okay. Um, I was in my senior year. I had tried out for an internship with um, an insurance company and I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And so I was disappointed. I was hurt. I was crushed. I didn't know what I was going to do. Right. So mm -hmm. I go to her uh, with my head hung down and, and she says, um, Lisa, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, a CPA, certified public accountant. She says, then you need to talk to someone who is a CPA. Right. And at that time, she re she gave me the name and phone number for a gentleman who was serving as the auditor general for the city of Detroit. And I called him. We set up a meeting. I went to his office and he connected me with the folks at Arthur Anderson, which is the CPA firm that no longer exists today. That's another story. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, that's where he once worked. And I met with the folks at Arthur Anderson. Um, I was only 17 years old, mm -hmm. you know meeting at in this big corporate office with these high level people uh, talking about beginning my career in accounting. And the funny thing is, uh, the following summer, I would always call them and say, hey, you remember me? <laughs> right. And they say, yes, Lisa. And I'm like, can I come work for you yet? And they're like, no, Lisa, you still <laughs> need to get accounting 271 and 272 under your belt. And I'm like, OK, next summer come around. I dial them up again. Bling! Remember me? Yes, Lisa. <laughs> Can I come work for you yet? No, Lisa. You still need to get these two courses under your belt. I said, okay. So here's the funny thing. When it came time for full-time employment, you know, I'd gotten all the, the course requirements done. Mm -hmm. um, I had, uh, you know, I prepared myself. I had my resume, had everything together. And I interviewed with them that first time for internships. And uh, I didn't get the job. So I was a bit disappointed, right? Yeah. It's like I did everything they asked me to do. I yeah. met with the recruiters when they came on campus. I had good eye contact, firm handshake, everything they say to have, right? Um, but I didn't get the job. So when it came time for full-time employment, I this is where the ego comes in. I chose not to interview with them. I okay. said, they snubbed me, you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All these years I have my eyes all set on, you know, starting with this firm and then they not give me the job. How's that possible? So what ended up happening is they decided to come on campus a second time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give it another shot. Right. And when they came on campus the second time, I did the interview and they extended me an offer. Wow. And the crazy thing was um, I accepted that offer. Mm -hmm. but it wasn't the offer that they gave me because I countered. Like, so this is a key thing that I want to let students know, professionals know that the first offer isn't the offer that you have to accept. Like you can negotiate right. your salary, right? But you have to know how there's a skill to that. And we could talk about that in another conversation. But nevertheless, I got what I wanted. And one of my classmates, she said, well, Lisa, you know, which firm are you going to work for? And I kind of kept it, you know, kind of low-key I, I didn't exactly mm. disclose where I was going so she says well knowing you you're probably going to that bougie Arthur Anderson <laughs> <laughs> now no doubt Arthur Anderson was creme de la creme at that time right, right. and uh, but what she didn't know was that it was already predetermined that I would work at Arthur Anderson yeah. From the time that my teacher asked me, what did I want to be when I grew up, when she introduced me to the CPA who once worked at Arthur mm -hmm. Anderson, and when that connection was made. And not only that, when I go and look at my memory book from high school, mm -hmm. and it asks you that infamous question, where will you be in five years? I said, I will be working for Arthur Anderson wow. as a CPA. 
Wow, that's that's good. And it all happened. Right. So it's about, you know, writing your goals down, mm -hmm. putting it in writing where you can see it. And sometimes you're going to put that book away like I did. But years later, you're going to pull it out and you're going to turn to that page and you're going to see where you said, this is what I'll be doing. Right. And I'll bet you, you'll be doing that. That's great advice because it didn't happen right away. And a it lot didn't. of times right now, students want instant gratification. Absolutely. I'm glad you touched on that, that it wasn't that, you know, that first time it didn't work, but you, you persisted, you stayed Absolutely. with it and you went back and you, like you said, you let that go that they didn't mm -hmm. hide you, went back and it happened. So that, that's great, great advice. I'm glad you touched on that. Now, what, um, how did you know that this was the career for you? You said you knew it in high school. Did you have family members or, or parents, you know, friends of your parents that were CPAs? How did you know that the CPA was the route you wanted to take? Here's the thing. No, no, no to all of the above. Wow. I didn't have, uh, you know, parents, friends of parents or anything like that who are accountants. Mm -hmm. Someone, a banker came to my class. I had an accounting class in high school and this banker came to our class for career day and he asked the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Kind of in general. Mm -hmm. And a young lady uh, who sat at the front of the class, she raised her, raised her hand and she said, I want to be a CPA. And I was like, ooh, CPA? What's that? Right. Like I had no idea what it was, but it sounded intriguing. So I said, I want to be that. <laughs> and that's where it all began. Wow. Um, I will, to my mom's credit, you know, she had a good financial um, acumen, if it, if you will, mm -hmm. when it came to numbers. And she often, uh, she was always counting money whenever she could yeah. get her hands on some. And she would, um, she would kind of, uh, well, she would prepare me when I was younger with math uh, mm -hmm. books and tutorials and, and always, you know, studying times tables and things like that. So yeah. I did have a knack for numbers and uh, enjoyed working with numbers. And mm -hmm. so it just took that one individual to spark that interest in me when they asked the question, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then a classmate was actually the one yeah. who exposed me to the ideal of being a CPA. Wow, that's good. The good kind of peer pressure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Now, final question. Yes. What advice would you give to someone that might want to follow in your footsteps? First thing I'd say is keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. Don't count yourself out and say, I don't or I can't or I'm missing something. Just keep an open mind to what's possible. Um, listen to the advice of those who mean you well. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about peer pressure and sometimes people will give you advice, but you got to decide, is right. this advice best for me? Right? right. And the last thing that I would say, actually two more things, never give up on your dreams. So I never gave up on Arthur Anderson, even though it seemed like I did. Um, I never gave up ultimately on passing the CPA exam, even though at one point it felt like I did. Um, and I never gave up on what my mom told me, which was, Lisa, you're going to be a star. So mm -hmm. that helped paint the picture that anything that I wanted to do, whether it was in accounting, whether it was in government and politics, higher education, or what I'm doing to now, doing now, writing a book, I never gave up on it. It's right. about sticking, staying the course, sticking to it until it gets done. Yeah, that's great advice. Now, I said that was a final question, but it, you know, some some people get those roadblocks, mm -hmm. and they you know they they stop. So what made you continue on when you know when you didn't pass the CPA exam the first time or the second time? What made you keep going? Well, first of all, um, I had to have a few conversations with myself. Mm -hmm. um, number one, and part of it was. I saw myself sitting on the sidelines while, while others were continuing to pursue their goal. And there happened to be one young lady in my office who was a year ahead of me. She had her own struggles with passing the exam the first time out, but she um, uh, ended up passing three parts of the exam. 
and I went to her and I said, Maria, how, how did you do that? How did you pass three parts? And she told me exactly what she did. She said, I studied before work. I studied during lunch hour. I studied after work, after work and about nine to 13 hours a day on the weekends. Wow. And I said to myself, I'm not doing that. Like, that's way too much work, right? Like, that's how our mind thinks. Like, somebody tells you exactly what to do, mm -hmm. but we say, no, that's too much. I'm not going to do it. Right. But then my other mind kicked in and said, but you just asked her, what did she do? Right. And she told you. She gave you a literal roadmap. And so from that point forward, I said, okay, I'm going to do what she said. And I set myself up. I disciplined myself, meaning I, I got a spreadsheet. I said, this is the day of the exam. This is what today's date is. I plotted out each week leading up to that date. And I, I gave myself a schedule of how many exam question, review questions I would do per day mm -hmm. so that I can build my stamina, if you will, leading up to the exam. Okay. And uh, when I took it that third time, I actually passed three parts, just yeah. like Maria had done. And then, you know, the fourth part, you know, it was that much easier to get that part yeah. done. Wow. Maria, I mean. Uh, <laughs> we can thank Maria. We can thank Maria. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> I, I really thank you for spending time with me and uh, sharing your advice. I think this is going to be helpful to a lot of young people. And uh, we wish you the best moving forward. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you for having me.